Assalamualaikum. A very good morning, everyone. I am Teacher Suhada, your science teacher. Welcome to Tevis Intensive Class. Okay, for your information, I will be covering up all of the topic that you already learned from Form 4 until Form 5, Sciences Subject, comprises of 21 topic. We'll be covering up uh, all 21 topic within 20 hours in this 10 days. So please bear with me until day 10, okay? Okay. So, without further ado, uh, let's begin our lesson two. Yesterday, we already learned the lesson one comprises of the unit one until unit three. What did we learn in unit one? In unit one, we do learn about the safety equipment that we should wear before enter into the lab, before doing an experiment. The safety equipment in the laboratory, such as eye wash station, safety shower. Okay, in unit two, what did we learn? We learned about the emergency help. What do you have to remember about the emergency help? Om only these two, which is the first one, cardiopulmonary resuscitation. And the third one is the Heimlich. And the second one is the Heimlich maneuver. Okay, then the third lesson, we do learn about the parameters of the body health. What do we measure? We measure a temperature to know that someone is healthy or not. We measure the temperature. Then we measure the blood pressure. And then we measure the heart rate of the person. And last, we measuring the body mass index, the formula. You should just remember, yeah? Okay, so let's start about lesson two. I'll be covering up the topic of from unit four, the green technology for environmental sustainability and unit five about genetics. What is genetic? Why genetic is there? Okay. Let's move to the unit four first. We go to the green technology. What do you know about green technology? Do you have any idea about green technology? Okay. Green technology is a technology that a human built that has a very minimum effect towards the environment. Let's say we are building a house that emit less carbon dioxide in terms of the usage. Okay. Without further ado, let's move to the national uh, green technology policy that being established in 2019 by our government. The, uh, the national green technology policy comprises of the four main pillars. Okay, four main pillars. The first one is social. The first one is social. The second one is the environment, energy, followed by the economy. In terms of social, we want to make a technology that improves the quality of life. With the addition of the technology, a person do not have to do a lot of work. A person don't have to do to give a lot of energy to do the work. Okay. Then in terms of the environment environment we want to make a technology that has a minimum effect to the environment has a minimum effect to our environment let's say um, now we have a car our car is using a petrol petrol is the non-renewable energy so in order to make the car that emit less carbon dioxide, our car, we are using a petrol. So, instead of using petrol, we can make a car that using the renewable energy such as solar car. We also have the electric car. Okay, then about the energy. We want to promote the energy efficiency, the energy independence. We don't want to depend on petrol anymore. We don't want to depend on the natural gases anymore. We want something non-renewable sources, renewable sources, okay? 
promoting energy efficiency we are we want to make uh, using a small amount of energy to do a huge amount of impact of impact okay in terms of economy another pillars of the national green policy in terms of economy in terms of economy we want to enhance our economy and technology for our country to generate our country economically needs okay so let's see on the next slide students if you have any other any question you please just drop at the room chat so that i can pick to the relevant answer questions okay now we go to the energy sector we have a lot nowadays we have a lot of socio-scientific issues being raised so we divide the socio-scientific issues into few sectors the first one we go into energy sectors do you see what picture is this this is a picture of the polar bears penguin uh, trap in the middle of ice of the sea you can see this is caused by the global warming global warming causes a climate change okay let's see the first row global warming causes the climate change that caused the melting of ice at the north pole so that the polar bears and the other animal don't have any other habit habitat when the ice at the north pole melt what do you think it will be caused it will cause the increasing sea level sea water level whenever the level of the sea increases it will cause the flood okay let's see to the next column which is the greenhouse effect what is greenhouse effect Greenhouse effect is the emissions of the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, usually carbon dioxide. If carbon dioxide increases, it will cause a global warming. It is linked to each other, yeah? Okay, now let's move to the next column, which is the depletion of the fossil fuel. In terms of the energy, we are... We are depends on the petrol like the re non renewable energy is a petrol so uh, we are using a lot of petrol diesel without knowing that one day those sources of petrol and diesel petroleum it will be finished so if it's finished what we're gonna use to make our car move so that's why we should overcome the socio-scientific issues by replacing the fuel with the biofuel okay apart from that another socio-scientific issues that raises in terms of the energy sectors is the air pollution the releases of the carbon dioxide causes the air pollution the releases of the Okay, the factories that release the smoke causes the air pollution from the factories, from a motor transport. Okay, how do we overcome this social scientific issue? We overcome this social scientific issue by application of the green technology. Uh, instead of using the re non-renewable energy such as petroleum, we can use the renewable energy. What is example of the uh, what is the example of the renewable energy? The first one is the solar energy. You can see the picture over here. The house is using the solar panel to generate the electricity. Okay, the second one is the hydro hydro energy we have a dam from the dam we can generate the electricity the third one is the geothermal energy does anyone have any idea about the geothermal energy usually for this geothermal energy this is for a country that have uh, active volcanoes 
Malaysia don't have the active volcanoes. So for a country that have uh, active volcanoes such as Indonesia, uh, Philippines and Japan, they can generate their electricity by this geothermal energy. And then the fourth one is the biomass energy. Do you know from a biomass? Biomass is basically it's from the our waste, our solid waste. Our food waste will cause the form of the maggots or lava from a lava. We can generate into, we can generate a renewable energy, which is the biodiesel. The fifth one is the wind energy, the usage of windmill. Okay, this, this one usually for a place that has a strong wind, like in the one in Texas, America. Okay, all of these are the example of the renewable energy sources. Now we move to the next sector, which is the waste and wastewater management sector. The socio-scientific rises from this waste and wastewater management sector is the disposal of wastewater directly into the water source. We all of us known about the water crisis issue at Klang Valley, right? It causes by the pollution from the factories that directly through their chemicals into our river. So disposal of wastewater indirectly into the source of water may cause a water pollution. Yeah. Next, we have an unsystematically disposal solid waste. Therefore, each of the residential area have their own specific place where the residents can throw away their waste product food waste not properly dispose for the food waste apart from dispose it we can make it into a compost fertilizer okay there is a research stated that the paper as a main contributor of the solid waste so how we want to overcome this problem we can overcome this by preventing the usage of the paper prevent the usage of the plastic. We can even reduce the usage. Biological process. What is biological process? Biological process is apply, applicable for a factories that want to, uh, that want to dispose their chemicals or chemical waste into the river. They need to to do the biological process to the chemical first, only then they can dispose the sources of the waste into the river. Okay, then we can practice 5R. 5R comprises of refuse, reduce, we refuse the usage of paper, we reduce the usage of paper by practice the paperless billing, we can, and then we can practice usage the paper. Let's say if uh, a paper have two sided, one sided already fill up, then another sided we can use as well. We want to minimize the usage of the paper, yeah? And then we can recycle the paper. You can see the picture over here. Recycle, paper separately, plastic and glass. And recovery. Okay, let's move to the next sector. What is the next sector? Each, which is the agriculture and the forestry sector. The socio-scientific issue rises from this agricultural and forestry sector is the opening land. Opening land for agriculture to building a residential area. It's needed someone to lock all of the trees over there. Okay, in terms of agricultural, the farmers tend to use the excessive chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and they want to make the open burning to make their land more fertile. 
Why did I say uh, the burn soil more fertile? Because all of the nutrients already burn and turns into the nutrient so that the land more fertile. Habitat and ecosystem destruction. When we do a logging, of course, the habitat of the animals is destruct, being destructed. How do we uh, overcome this kind of socio-scientific issues? We will overcome these socio-scientific issues by we can replant the trees, we can use the biological control. What is biological control? Anyone have idea about the biological control? If you have any idea, please drop in the comment below so that I can read, we can share together. Okay, biological control is a situation, let's say in a paddy field, you don't have to use the pesticides. To replace the pesticide, you put in the predator, predator for your prey. In a paddy field, there is a lot of rats, so the predator for the rats is either a snake we are using an eagle or an owl okay the other steps to apply the green technology to overcome the socio-scientific issues is control logging we control the logging activities not much logging activities being allowed and then we gazette more forest reserve for the gazette forest reserve no one can do a logging activity over here Okay, apart from that, you can we can also impose a higher fine to the one who did the illegal logging. Let's move to the next sector, which is the last sector, transportation sector. Okay, in terms of the transportation sector, the socio-scientific issue rises mainly all about the releases of the carbon dioxide and the carbon monoxide. This both gases, carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide is the gases that cause the greenhouse effect. Greenhouse effect may cause what? Greenhouse gases will cause the... Will cause what? Any, anyone have any idea? Global warming. Okay. Global warming arises from the problem of abundance of the carbon dioxide and the carbon monoxide in our atmosphere. Yeah? Okay, the second socio-scientific issue is the petrol, the usage of the petrol and the diesel. We know that the petrol and the diesel, one day it will become it. It will not there anymore. We don't have, we gonna be no, no petrol and no diesel. So how do we overcome that? We need to make a new source then by using the non-renewable energy. Okay, to uh, overcome this kind of socio-scientific issues in the transportation sector, we can use a bicycle. You, we can buy because the bicycle not releases any greenhouse gases, right? Okay, for a short distance, we can walk. Let's say we, we just want to go to a shop, just a stone throw away from our house so you can walk. Don't use a vehicle, motor vehicle. Okay, the use of vehicle by that using a renewable and the use of vehicle that use a biodiesel, that use a biofuel. Okay, the use of public transportation. We can, in this Klang Valley area especially, we have a lot of public transportation. We can use it, such as monorail, LRT. Uh, we also have public bus, okay, carpooling. Let's say you want to go to school. Your neighbors also went to the same school. Then you can go to school together. So don't have to use the two car. So only use the one car to go to the same places. And then the usage of the biofuel and natural gases. Biofuel such as biodiesel. I explained before. Okay. This picture on your left is a carbon footprint. What is carbon footprint? Carbon footprint is all about the human activities. 
any human activities that releases the greenhouse gases. The greenhouse gases that you should remember is carbon dioxide. Greenhouse gases causes the global warming. Okay, I want to repeat again about the carbon footprint, the definition of the carbon footprint that mainly asked in section B, theory question or paper one. It is a, uh, an activity, uh, human activities will cause the amount of greenhouse gases such as carbon dioxide in our atmosphere so we are done with unit four we are done with unit four okay before we go to the unit four uh, before we go to the paper one as an exercise let's do some recap Okay, just now we did learn about the four national policy, four national pillars, which is the social, environment, energy, and economy. Then we do learn about the socio-scientific issues in certain sector, in energy sector. It causes a global, a global warming. The greenhouse gases causes a global warming. The types of greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide. The second sector is waste and waste water management sector. Okay. The paper has become the most abundant solid waste in this earth. So we have to reduce the usage of the paper, minimize the usage of the paper. And the fourth sector is the agriculture and forestry sector. The problem of illegal logging and logging, we have to overcome by Gazette, the national park. And then the fourth one in terms of the uh, transportation sector. Why it's become a socio-scientific issue? Because the usage of the motor vehicle releases a lot of greenhouse gases that may cause a air pollution. Okay. Then we do learn about the carbon footprint. What is carbon footprint? Carbon footprint uh, causes by the human activities that releases abundant amount of carbon dioxide. The example of the carbon footprint like the open burning, also the transportation. And now we go to the paper, paper one. Okay, know that science, we have two paper, paper one and paper two. Yesterday, I did inform about the technique to answer the paper one. The first technique is G. G stands for Garis. Please underline. Underline your keywords. Every question have a keyword. So, please do underline your keywords. The second one, P, comprises of panka. Remove. You have to remove any answer that you are really confident it is the incorrect one. Please remove it so that you won't confuse by it at the end. Okay, and the third one, last one, sell aside. Don't forget to move your answer into the OMR paper. Okay, let's try to apply this GPS technique in paper one. Diagram 3 shows the socio-scientific issues in the waste and wastewater management sector. What did it show in the picture in diagram 3? It is a paper. About 268 million tons of paper produced a year. To produce one ton of paper, we need two to four tons of wood. So paper also a major contribute to solid waste. Did it did told us that the paper is a major contributor of a solid waste. Okay, then see the question below. Suggest a way to overcome with this above issue. A way to overcome the overusage of the paper so that we won't produce much solid waste. Okay, read one by one. Deforestation. 
why we do the deforestation? We want to reduce the deforestation, in fact. So this one is incorrect one. Please remove. Panka, remove the incorrect answer. Maximize the use of paper. We want to minimize the usage of the paper. So this one is the correct ans incorrect answer. Dispose. Okay, so the correct answer is now is between C or D. Which one is correct one? So dispose all of the paper and solid waste into one container. It's not really the correct one, right? Adopting D, adopting 5R concept, refuse, reduce, reuse and recycle and recovery. So we did learn this just now. So this one is the most correct one. So don't forget to move your answer into the OMR paper. Sell aside already. The newspaper clipping below shows the global warming phenomenon. Global warming phenomenon. It do talk about the global warming. Which of the following is the cause of the phenomenon? What is the causes of the global warming? The main causes of the global warming. Garis, underline or circle the key words. Replanting the trees. It asks about the cause. It's not asking about the way to overcome right so replanting the trees is not the correct answer it asks the cause so please remove the answer formation of the acid rain it is the effect of air pollution so it has nothing to do with the global warming causes and c let's read c Discharge the chemical waste and sewage into rivers and the sea. This one is a statement that lead to the water pollution, not the global warming. So, we can get the correct answer is D. Now, we sell aside D for uncontrolled emission of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. We know that carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide is the main substance that may cause the global warming, the main substance of the greenhouse gases. Guys, if you have any question, please drop your question in the room chat. We can discuss together. Okay, since you don't have any other questions, so let's move to the next question. Which of the following considered as a socio socio scientific issues in transportation sector? In transportation sector, the issue in transportation mainly is all about the emission of carbon dioxide. Okay, let's see. The price of vehicle is too high. Oh no, this is, has nothing to do to the emission of carbon dioxide or the number of heavy vehicles on the road increasing. This is the issues of the traffic jam, not the issues of the socio-scientific issues. Okay. The usage of green energy. C, the, the usage of green energy resources by vehicle affect our health. Green energy not affected our health. So let's see D. The burning of fuel by the engine of the vehicles releases the greenhouse gases. So the socio-scientific issues in the transportation sector mainly because of the emission of the carbon dioxide. So D is the correct one. Sell aside, transfer your answer to OMR paper. Okay, let's read this. Diagram one, diagram shows a chart of green technology application. Application of the green technology, they have a green transportation. They already have the creation of the natural gas vehicle. So what is X? They do ask about X. Underline the keyword. They ask about X. They ask what is X? Let's see A. Green mode of transport. They already give the green mode of transport over here. So why want to give more? So A is the incorrect one. 
remove the answer. So B, the use of robotic system, it has nothing to do with the green technology in transportation, yeah? So this is not correct, teacher. So please remove it. C, the creation of electric vehicle. It can be, right, electric vehicle instead of the petroleum vehicle. D, let's see D, the use of biofuels as a substitute for petroleum. Biofuel, we do talk about the biofuel to replace the petroleum and the diesel, right? So the correct answer is D, now selesai. All right. Let's see the last question for today in Kertas 1, in Kertas 1, in Kertas 1. What is the importance of the green technology? The importance of the green tech. They ask about the importance. Okay, let's see. A. Overcome the problem of rapidly growing population. The A is has nothing to do with the green technology. So, A is incorrect. Remove it. How about B? B. Increase the use of country's natural resource. No, we want to minimize the usage of the country resort, natural resources, right? So, B is incorrect one. Overcome the problem of environment destruction. We don't want our environment to be being destroyed. That's why being destroyed by the pollution, by the releases of the greenhouse gases. Yeah, it can be wrong. So how about D? Increase the carbon emission. We want to reduce the carbon emission. The main reason why there is a green technology because we want to reduce the carbon emission. So D is incorrect. Now we get the correct answer, which is C. Now, transfer your answer. Don't forget to transfer your answer if you answer correctly, but you not transfer your answer in an OMR paper. Useless. Okay. Now, we go to the section B. Usually, in this kind of unit, this unit 4, it's not going to be come out in unit A. Because unit A, it must have a variable question. You don't have a variables. So, it probably will come out as section B. Section B mainly is all about theory and application. So, if you don't read, you won't get it. But for this chapter, it's very special because you can think of something that you can think of. Logical thinking in this unit. Question in section B, you have to answer all, yeah? It comprises of 38 mark. Okay, let's see the sample of the question. Diagram 3.1 and diagram 3.2 shows the activity in agriculture and forestry sector. Okay, what did the persons doing? The farmers, what did the farmers doing? He is spraying something. Probably an insecticide or fertilizer, right? Okay. The 3.1, it is an open burning, the burning at the open area. Okay, let's see the question A. Question A, state 1. One factors that contribute to the socio scientific issues in 3.1. 3.1 spraying the insecticide. So, what is the factors, the socio scientific issues? The diagram itself already gave an answer. So, you just basically have to write spraying insecticides, spraying fertilizers, excessive fertilizers, then you go, already got one mark. We move to the next question, which is question B. Based on diagram 3.1, still 3.1, it's all about the spraying insecticides, suggest two green technology that can solve the problem. You can use a compost fertilizer. You can use a 
compost fertilizer is basically a fertilizer made up of our waste product food waste vegetable waste any waste product biomass production from wastes okay this is just the same like the up there and then the biological control just now i did inform biological control you can use uh, eagle at the paddy field okay the sample of the biological control then the eagle will eat the mice which is the Okay, usually the mice or the red is the main enemy in a paddy field. That's why in a biological control, you, the farmers use, usually using an eagle or a snake so that the eagle or the snake can eat the red. Okay, let's see the next question. Now they ask about 3.2. 3.2 is all about the open burning. What is the long-term effect? It asks about the long-term effect on the environment if the activities is carried out in a large scale. That's been a large scale of open burning in a long-term effect. It may cause the greenhouse effect. The greenhouse effect will later cause the global warming. If you write greenhouse effect, you already get one mark. And for a global warming, another one mark. But the maximum mark, mark utilized here, only one mark. So, the second one. Okay, this question two and question one are related to each other, yeah? So, if you are wrong at the first question, you're going to be not wrong. You're going to be wrong at the second question, yeah? So, you have to be very careful over here. Make sure the first question is correct. Now we see the second question, name the major gas that contributes to the effect stated in 5C1. What you stated in 5C1, the major, the, the gas that releases in greenhouse effect, the greenhouse gases, and the other one, how to solve the problem. You're going to get two marks over here. We know that greenhouse gases is either carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide so just write one for one mark here and another one we can solve it by replanting the tree so that the tree can absorb the carbon dioxide back the higher amount of compound toward illegal log logging okay apply a higher fine towards someone who involved in illegal logging so that they are scared to do it okay another one mark over here then you're gonna get two mark. and we finish on the first question the second question let's see okay if you have any other question or please drop your question at the room chat below yeah okay deforestation activities has become a major socio-scientific issues in forestry sector they talk about forestry sector what is deforestation they want you to define deforestation deforestation is the massive destruction of the jungle it's a massive forest elimination with various purposes this is a theory question that you can think of something to do with the application as well so one mark over here state two factors to these forestry issues. Of course, the opening of the residential area, the opening of the agricultural area, logging, illegal logging. Okay, you have to give two, this one, one mark. Opening agricultural area, another one mark. And logging, another one mark. But the maximum mark here, only two. Let's say your second answer over here is incorrect. The markers will see the 
third option. If it's correct, then you're going to get two marks. Okay, very easy, these questions in this unit. Okay, explain how deforestation issues how deforestation issues they ask you to explain usually for the explanation question it will be more than two marks like this one they give you two marks so it must be two answer yeah explain how deforestation how deforestation can cause land erosion how if you cut a lot of trees in the jungle it may cause the land erosion how because the soil will lose its support usually the trees must have a roots so from the root it get a support the soil will get a lot of support from the root of the trees so without the trees without the root of the trees the soil will lose its support it will cause the soil easily eroded and the eroded soil, it will cause the landslide and the floods when it is raining heavily. So this one for one mark. And another one is this one. You're going to get two marks. Okay, the next question, which is a question D. State two green technology applications in forestry sector to overcome socio-scientific issue. We did discuss about the application of the green technology. What is the application that you can write? You can control the logging activities, hire fine to the one involving involved in the illegal logging. You can replant back the tree. We know that the tree uh, absorb the carbon dioxide, releases the oxygen. So we can replant more trees. And then the, we can get that more forest reserve. So one mark over here, control logging, one mark for replanting more trees and get that another one mark. Maximum is two marks. So only write two also enough. If you want to write more, also can as a backup. But don't waste time. Okay, we go to the section C. Section C is the choices of the question. We basically we have three questions. The first one is question eleven, and question twelve, thirteen. Question eleven is an AC question. You have to answer those kind of question. And question twelve and thirteen is the choices question. You can choose. Okay, let's see the type of the question application questions for marks over here. It did ask about the effect of disposal of the toxic waste toxic substance from the factories to the environment how does the disposal of the toxic waste cause the environmental destruction how okay okay it mainly cause the water pollution right water pollution you write water pollution one mark for water pollution reasoning another one mark so what is your reason water pollution how does it affect the environment its effect human health okay then you're gonna get another one mark over here how about another reason Another effect, the toxic waste, it may cause the aquatic animals, right? The aquatic life, endangered. Okay, guys, who can live in a such a polluted river? Okay, this one, toxic waste cause aquatic life endangered. So, another endangered and die. They cannot live in that kind of polluted water. So, this one, another two mark. Okay, let's move to the solving problem question. 
yesterday I did talk about the conceptualized question, but now let's discuss about the solving problem question. How to tackle with this kind of question? Usually, you utilize mark is six mark. Most domestic waste such as paper dispose of the open burning. Okay, the problem here is the paper dispose of open burning the paper disposed by an open burning this is the problem open burning cause air pollution open burning cause air pollution the causes of the open burning the, not the effect of the open burning how to overcome how to overcome this problem so you give your methods you give three methods And the last one, you give the best method. Okay. To do it, you have to make, you can make either uh, an essay or in a paragraph. You can make in a point form. But I would like to teach you one technique that guarantee you gonna get six mark, which is the tabling technique, tabulation data technique. You just make a table, two columns. The right, the left column, put the problem statement. Problem statement we can get from the question. Domestic waste such as paper disposed by open burning. Paper disposed by open burning. Paper disposed by open burning. This one, one mark. The explanation of the problem, the root of the problem. The open burning next cause air pollution. This one, the explanation of the problem. The problem cause what? Cause air pollution. The methods and explanation, you give at least three to get three mark. Okay. The maximum mark here is three mark. Recycle, you reuse the waste product. Let's say you can make a compost fertilizer. Burn in incinerator. You cannot burn in open places but you can burn in incinerator so that the smoke will be filtered first before going at the atmosphere another one mark and then paperless billing practice paperless billing another one mark over here now you got the maximum of three mark if you want give more also can enforcement of law by imposing a fine to the one who make open burning so this one also one mark but the maximum is three mark then your last is the best method choose the best method practice paperless billing right or any method that you can think of based on what you give above based on this choose the best method okay Another one question. Last question for this section and this unit. The increasing of carbon dioxide gases in atmosphere causes a global warming phenomenon. Carbon dioxide causes global warming phenomenon. Describe the methods, methods to overcome with this global warming phenomenon. How you overcome with this problem? Okay, to overcome this problem, your explanation should include the following aspect. Now, they give an aspect. Identify the problem. The problem is the increases carbon dioxide gases causes global warming. And you the cause of the problem, combustion of the fossil fuel, right? Releases of the carbon dioxide. The methods and explanation. Okay, now your problem statement now is the global warming phenomenon. It caused by deforestation or the increasing of the carbon dioxide. Increasing carbon dioxide. And then they ask the third question. They want you to give two methods, but they prefer 
fight for marks. So that mean if you give a method, you have to explain your method. The first method you write down is reforestation. So please explain one mark for reforestation. Absorb carbon dioxide in the carbon dioxide in the air in this atmosphere. Another one mark. Use public transport or carpooling to reduce the fossil fuels emission. Another one mark here. So public transport, carpooling, one mark. You're going to get four mark in total over here, methods. So please practice the usage of a table so that you won't miss out any of the question here. So student tends to miss out something when they think that, oh, this question I can tackle with. So it's so not much. It's so easy. It's just an application question, not a theory question. So please make a table. On the left side, put in what did they ask. On the right side, put in your answer. So that you won't miss out anything. Okay, we are done with unit four. We are done with unit four, which is the green technology topic now we're gonna go to the genetics unit but then before that we're gonna have a five minute break so i'll see you after this and continue the topics of genetics you want to know about the genetics it is a very interesting topic so please bear with me another one hours okay see you hello guys i'm back again with teacher suhada now we are, we are on the lesson two we done with the unit four, unit four, which is the green technology. And then now we are going through a unit five, the genetics. I like about this topic because we can know how we are coming from. Okay, when we talk about genetics, every part of our body is a cell. Our skin come out from cell, our eyes from cell, our nail from a cell. Okay, what from our cell, this is a structures of one of the cell. Our cell have one of the set the cell have nucleus. Each cell have nucleus. Please bear in mind each cell have nucleus. In a nucleus there is a chromosome. The chromosome. Then, how does the chromosome form? Chromosome is actually a single part. Then it will be replicated. It will be replicate. Let replicate to become a double helix structure. And this replicated part we call as a chromatin. Okay, chromosomes is the place where it stored our DNA information, our protein information. So that's how interesting the chromosome is. From a cell, we have a nucleus. From a nucleus, we have a chromosome. From a chromosome, it's replicate to become a double helix structure that stored our DNA, our protein information okay now we go to the chromosomes each human each person have 23 pairs 23 pairs of chromosome that's mean a total of 46 chromosome 23 times 2 because it is in pair Chromosome have 21 pairs belong to autosome chromosome while another only one pair two chromosome belong to sex chromosome okay let's see what does it mean by the one that i circle in red this one is a sex chromosome sex chromosome XY indicate a male and XX indicate a female. The other part of the chromosome, we have 46 chromosome. Two belong to sex. Identify, we are male or female. So another 44, this 44 chromosome or 22 pairs of chromosome. This one is an 
autosome chromosome. Okay. Only the one that I circle is the sex chromosome. Sex chromosome only have one pair, while autosome have 22 pairs of chromosome. Okay. Let's see. Cell division. When talk about our cell. We always have to undergo a cell division. There is two types of cell division. The first one, mitosis. And the second one, meiosis. Mitosis, meiosis. What is the difference between them? Okay. Mitosis always happen at the somatic cell. Like our skin, uh, our cells, our nail, anything that, anything in our body has their own cell. So mitosis always happen in a somatic cell. We call it somatic cell. While meiosis only happen at a reproductive cell, such as sperm and ovum. Okay, how to remember, teacher? I cannot remember. This is so difficult. Okay, you just remember one, either one. You can choose the meiosis. For me, I like to choose the meiosis. Meiosis, it happen at the sperm or ovum only, reproductive cell. Okay, the other part of the body, it must be mitosis. Very easy, right? Okay, now we go to the next slide that discussing about a mitosis. I have a very interesting acronym about the mitosis. Please remember Pak Mat. Pak Mat. Okay, who is Pak Mat, teacher? Mm -hmm. Pak Mat, P for profasa. Two for metaphase. M for metapase. A for anapis, T for telopis, pak mat. What happened during this pak mat? So difficult to remember. What happened during profasa, teacher? Okay, just imagine that you are going to school on a, in a Monday, in Monday. Usually, you gonna have a, an, as you have to assembly, right? So, this one is the kumpul. What happened during the propase? What happened during P? You have to kumpul. Assembly. And then M. What happened during the M? You have to berato. And what happened during A? You have to tari. Huh. Everyone are separated, divide into their own class. And then... T after the assembly is finished, so you are go back to your own class, which is you have to separate with them. PISA. Please remember this acronym for mitosis. Pak Mat. What happened during profasa? We are kumpul together. M berato align at the equatorial plane. Then PMA, anapis, anapis, what happened during anapis? Tari, each of the chromatids are, are being pulled to each of, to the opposite pole. Okay, what happened during telophase? Uh, T, uh, the chromatid arrive at the opposite pole and it's become divided, they separated, PISA. Okay, I repeat again, the first one, prophase. The chromosome um, assemble together, shorten, become thicken, centriole, such uh, about to produce. This is a centriole. Okay, Sim spindle fiber also about to produce. During the metaphase, chromosome align at the equatorial plane. Uh, their barato align at the equatorial plane attached by their centromere, the one who joined two chromosomes together. Okay, anapase, anapase, tari, the chromatid being pulled into opposite, into the opposite poles. Okay. Then what happened during the telophase? The chromatid uh, already arrive at the end of the pole. Then they become separated. Okay, please remember Pak Mat. Kumpul beratu tarik pisah. Kumpul beratu tarik pisah. That is mitosis. 
What is the importance of the mitosis? It is to replace the damaged cell for our growth, for a sexual reproduction. How do I say replace damaged cell? Let's say we have an injuries, an open wound injuries. How does the wound being attached together? That's how mitosis played a major role. There will be a mitosis at the open wound. So our skin will join in together. Okay, let's see the meiosis. What happened during meiosis? What make a difference between mitosis and meiosis? The stage is just the same teacher. Professor Pakmai, P. Kumpul, Tarik, uh, kumpul, okay. we berat kumpul. What else? Berato. What did we do? Tarik pisah. Kumpul, berato, tarik pisah. Yes, pak mat. It's just about the same. Okay. The one that makes it different is for the prophase. The first stage. It have a crossing over. I give an example. Why this crossing over? You see over here? Okay. This is a chromosome. This is another chromosome. They are exchanging DNA over here. They are exchanging information over here. We call this as a crossing over. Okay. Then what happened? The products of it. Okay. We still have a chromosome. And another chromosome. Uh, but it have a slightly green part over here. And a slightly purple part over here. This caused by crossing over. The importance of this crossing over, it will produce a variation. Okay? It will produce a variation. Okay. What is another, another differences, teacher? Okay. Mitosis, it only have one piece. P. M A T Pakmat one time Pakmat, but for meiosis it has two times Pakmat. Hmm. Two times Pakmat. Prophase one, meiosis one. We have P M A T all one. Okay, for meiosis two, we have another Pakmat over here. Okay, what make it different? Okay, let's see to the previous one. Mitosis. The first uh, piece, the chromosome, they have four chromosomes in one cell. And the end of the cell, they still have four chromosomes over here and here. Mitosis, the, if the beginning of four chromosomes, then the ending is four chromosomes. Let's say the beginning is the eight chromosome, then the ending of it, it must be eight chromosome. It's different from a meiosis. It's starting from four chromosome. At the meiosis one, four chromosome, it will become two chromosome each. You can see four chromosome. And at the end of the meiosis one, it have already two chromosomes each. It have two cells. Each cell has two chromosomes. Then it will undergo a meiosis and the end still same like mitosis. In meiosis two, they have two chromosomes. So the end product is two chromosomes each. Okay, that's how it's differ from mitosis. Now let's go to a table that we, we can see clearly the differences and similarities. Okay, the one in the middle, uh, the similarities between mitosis and meiosis is both 
is uh, undergo a DNA replication. Both is a form of cell division. Okay, what make it different? Mitosis, I keep repeating that mitosis is happening at somatic cell. Meiosis is happening at reproductive cell. Okay, so that's another. It happened at the somatic cell. Happen at the reproductive cell. Okay, mitosis produce two daughter cell. While meiosis produce four daughter cell. Okay, let's see the diagram again. The end product, they have four daughter cell. One, two, three, four. Four daughter cell. Okay, for mitosis, only have two. One, two. Two daughter cell. Crossing over not occur yeah, in mitosis, but crossing over the changing of the information is occur at meiosis. That's why meiosis have a variation. But mitosis don't have a variation. Okay, the daughter cell are identical to their mother cell. That's they don't have a crossing over, not changing the information. That's why they just look the same like their daughter, like their parent cell. For meiosis, because there is a crossing over, that's why the daughter cell won't look not identical to their parents. Okay. For the mitosis, the number of chromosomes just the same like the beginning if your beginning is four chromosome then your ending is four chromosome we call it diploid the number of chromosome if your chromosome the beginning of the chromosome is four then the ending of the chromosome is two then it is a meiosis we call it haploid okay Let's see the role. The, let's see the recap of the role of the importance of the mitosis and meiosis. Mitosis is for replacing a damaged cell. Dead cell. If we have an open wound, you remember how the open wound can close again? It is because of the cell division. Okay, to replace the damaged cell. Another um, importance is for a sexual reproduction. Okay, I give an example of starfish. We have one starfish. I have one starfish now. I separate the starfish into two parts. They don't have another one leg. One leg stuck here. I divide the starfish. So cruel. Okay. So the end product, the starfish can re regenerate the new leg. Then they can produce a five leg already. And this one also can produce another four leg. They can regenerate. That, what happened to them is a mitosis. Mitosis, they call it a sexual reproduction. Okay, for a meiosis, it's important for the reproducing a gamete. We know that the human only have 46 chromosome, 22 pairs of chromosome. We have a male here, married with a female here. A male carry 22, 23 pairs of chromosome. Female also 23 pairs of chromosome. The end of the product, the baby still have 23 pairs of chromosome. This is meiosis. And meiosis is produce the genetic diversity uh, because there is a crossing over. Let's see the inheritance. We divide the allele. Allele is, uh, allele is a genetic in that, that carry. Allele is carry genetic information. Allele is carry a genetic information.
Okay, so we always call this allele as a dominant when it has a capital letter. Okay, I give example someone with color blindness. Color blindness, yeah. We have B. B, capital letter, and B, small letter. B is a dominant allele. B, so that indicate that the person is normal. B, recessive, small letter indicate that the person has a color blindness. So if I write B, B, the person is normal. If I write B, B, one dominant, one recessive, then the person is normal. Carrier, just a carrier. Then I write both recessive, small letter of B. Then the person has a color blind. Okay, let's see another example. H is an allele that carry a black hair. And H is an allele that carry, that carry a blonde hair. Okay. If both of the allele is dominant, both capital letter, then the person will show a phenotype of black hair. Phenotype is the characteristic, yeah? Okay. If someone carry an allele of dominant, one dominant, one recessive, it will show dominant will always win, no matter how many recessive is there. So, the person will have the black hair. Okay, another one, uh, this one is incorrect, yeah? Both has small letter both is recessive allele then the person will show a blonde hair okay that's how it's work okay how to determine the gender of the offspring we have a father over here we have a mother a male will carry xy 44 times xy a human has 46 chromosomes so, this 44 is uh, autosome chromosome. This two is sex chromosome. While for mother, the mother carry 44 plus XX. Huh? Because it's a female, right? So, it's divided by 2, 22 over here, plus X, 22 plus Y. This one, 22 plus X, both have X, 22 plus X. So we did a cross, cross over here, then we're going to get 44 plus XX. This one is a female. Female. This one also we get a female because it XX. 22 plus X plus 22 plus X. So we're going to get a female as well. And the third one, we're going to get a male, a happy male. And the fourth one, also a happy male. Okay, let's move to the next slide. Let's do some exercise. I need you guys to identify the phenotypes of the offspring. If any of you can answer, please do chat at the room chat below. The father and mother are the carriers of thalassemia because one of them has single allele R. Okay. Before that, what is thalassemia? Thalassemia is a situation where your body not producing enough red blood cell. If you have red blood cell, then the red blood cell easily... Big dead. Okay. 
So you, your body don't have enough RBC red blood cell. Okay, they told us that the father and the mother is the carrier for a thalassemia. If it's a carrier, one must be capital letter, one must be uh, recessive, small letter. Small letter R is for positive thalassemia. And R is for normal. Okay, now we see father is a carrier, mother also a carrier. We're going to get R, we separate those R capital and small letter. Then we do, we did cross, we're going to get this R, R. What is the phenotype of the offspring, R, R? They have the normal or they have a thalassemia? They are normal. The first kids is normal. The second children and the third children uh, both have a mix of capital letter and a small letter, recessive and dominant allele. So it indicates that they are a carrier like their mother and their father. While the fourth child is recessive, both carry a recessive allele. So that means they having the thalassemia. Okay, so easy. Okay, now we go to the gene. Uh, we go to the mutation first. Okay, mutation. What is mutation? Mutation is uh, changes, spontaneous changes in the sequence of chromosome. Uh, let's say when your chromosome is from... Supposedly we have 46, but we have 47. The person have 47. That means... The person is undergoing a mutation. What kind of mutation? We have two types of mutation. The first type is chromosomal. The second one is the gene chromosome. We have chromosomal, gene chromosome. Chromosomal, when the structure or the number of chromosome involving the number, involving the number of chromosome. Okay. The example teacher, I don't understand what kind of number. Okay, we supposedly have 46 chromosomes as a normal human. But for a Down syndrome person, they will have a 47 chromosome. They have 47 chromosome, extra one chromosome at uh, pair 21, pair number 21. Okay. Turner syndrome and Klinefelter syndrome, it is affecting, for the Turner syndrome, it is affecting a female. A female supposedly to have to carry a normal female have to carry a XX. But for a Turner syndrome female, she only carry one X, only have one X. Another one X is missing. So, this female has no secondary sexual uh, characteristic. They don't have a period, no period. They are infertile. Okay, for Klinefelter syndrome, it is affecting a male. We know that the male should have only XY. But this male, this Klinefelter male they have extra x over here so this male are basically uh, don't have the secondary sexual characteristic as well they have a female characteristic characteristic they have a breast enlargement they have a small testis Okay, let's go. Let's go to the gene mutation. What is gene mutation? Gene mutation is the changes to the gene structure. Changes to the gene structure. How does the gene structure changes? We we see the factors later. The example of the gene mutation is another disease apart from the 
disease that have a syndrome. Just now we have a Down syndrome, Turner syndrome, Kleinfelter syndrome. So gene mutation is something to do with the color blindness, the hemophilia, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, albinism. Okay, color blindness is a situation where someone cannot differentiate between red color and green color. Hemophilia is a situation where someone have a problem with the blood clot factor. Let's say they have an open wound, so the blood cannot stop. So they, it is called a hemophilia. So sickle cell anemia, our normal cell, blood cell, red blood cell, supposedly in this kind of shape. But then for this sickle cell anemia, it's become like a sickle shape. So, not enough oxygen can be carried by the red blood cell. For a thalassemia, thalassemia is a problem where the red blood cell not produce. RBC, red blood cell, not enough. While albinism, where someone don't have melanin. Melanin is a, a substance that make our skin have a color. Brown, slightly brownish. Okay. Usually, they, they don't have those melanin, so they look so white. They are very sensitive to a light. Okay, what is the factors? We already learned what is the mutation. We have two types of mutation. Now we have to learn about the factors. What is the causes of the mutation? The first one is X-ray. That's why for a pregnant lady, doctor won't do an X-ray because it may cause mutation to the offspring. The second one, ultraviolet ray. Ultraviolet ray we can get from a sun. Okay, we, I give a situation, uh, nowadays our ozone layers is getting thinner due to the releases of the chlorofluorocarbon. The ozone layer become thinner. So ozone cannot filter the ultraviolet ray from the sun. So what the causes, the long-term effect of this ultraviolet ray from the sun, it may cause a skin cancer. That's why all of us are advised to wear sunblock, yeah? Okay, radioactive ray in the form of radioisotope usually being used in a cancer treatment, chemotherapy, radiotherapy. It will kill a cancerous cell as well as the healthy cell. That's why someone with that undergoing a chemotherapy or radiotherapy will have a lot of side effect. Okay, natural genetic factors. The mother have a, a mutation such as a color blindness. So then the offspring, the offspring should have the probability to get those kind of mutation as well. Okay, pregnancy at late age. And then where the mutation is at the ovum or the sperm. So it may cause the mutation as well to the kids. Carcinogen, usually we get from the cigarettes, from the asbestos. Asbestos is the substance in our shilling, yeah? Okay, we're done with the factors of the mutation. Now we go to gene disorder disease. Not much to go. Please bear with me. If you have any other question, please let me know in a room chat below. Yeah? Okay, now we learn about the gene disorder disease. What is gene disorder disease? Usually it is when, um, when someone, uh, it, gene disorder disease, we call it as a sex link hereditary disease. Why? Because it always affected at X chromosome, not Y. It's affected X chromosome only. So it is being carried from the parents to the offspring. Okay, the example of gene disorder disease is the color blindness, hemophilia, uh, thalassemia. It's caused by the recessive gene. Just a uh, small letter. Okay. 
another example over here provided over here x h x is the chromosome h is for the allele if capital letter it i it is a normal allele dominant allele small letter it is a recessive allele okay let's see the genotype if both allele is dominant so it is a normal female if one of the female allele got one recessive so it, the female is the carrier now the female has both a recessive allele then the female gonna have a hemophilia as well okay now we go to the male the male only have one x sex one x chromosome okay if the x is carry the dominant then the male is identified as a normal male don't have hemophilia but if the only the only h the only x carry a recessive allele small letter of h that's mean that male having a hemophilia male okay usually the gene disorder disease affected male compared to female because female has two x chromosome so if one already dominant another one if one already recessive another one dominant it's still okay they just become a carrier but male they only have one x chromosome let's say if those x is recessive then they become infected they become get the disease already they are not becoming a carrier okay let's see the sex link disease example the father have a color blindness they have x b b for blindness color blindness y then the mother is a carrier x b x small letter of recessive they will be undergoing a meiosis over here so the offspring genotype the first child the first child they have a dominant and recessive allele so there is a female carrier carrier of color blindness they are not color blindness but they are a carrier of color blindness okay let's see the second child they carry both recessive oh no so this this female have a color blindness okay how about this male this male carry a dominant allele so that means he is normal how about the last child he is carry a recessive allele. That means he has a color blindness. Okay. Let's move to the last part, which is the application of the genetic research. How do we apply this genetic research in today's field? The first thing that I want to talk in forensic science. Okay, in forensic science, in the crime scene, usually the police of the forensic scientists will found a blood sample from a blood sample, from a fingerprint. They can do a DNA profiling. Why DNA profiling is important? In this DNA profiling, we can know the karyotypes of uh, criminals. So from the karyotype, we can identify that the person have XY or XX. So from there, we can know either the criminal is female or male. Uh, so each uh, each chromosome, each pair of chromosome um, holding one characteristic of the person. Either the person have a blue eyes, either the person have a curly hair or straight hair. So it's very interesting. Okay, the second one, gene therapy. It's still an, an, in an experimental stage. It is a process where a healthy cell Mm, it is used for individual with uh, sex link diseases such as hemophilia and color blindness still and in, in an ex experimental stage a process where the healthy cell 
being inserted into the mutated cell, into the defective cell, so that the defective cell can be replaced by the healthy cell, so that the person won't be affected by the sex-linked diseases. Okay, for genetic genealogy, basically it's for to identify the pedigree of the family. It needs a DNA test. Okay, let's say if someone pregnant, can they know the child is normal or not? What do you think? If someone having a baby, can they know the child is in a good condition, such, in normal or not normal? How can they know? They can know by a new technology, which is amniocentesis. What does this amniocentesis do? Okay, how to do this amniocentesis? Basically, in amniocentesis, a uh, pregnant lady must be uh, between 15, 15 weeks to 20 weeks, on a 4 to 5 months. So, a very tiny needle will insert it into the mom's, into the mother abdomen. So, we're going to get the amniotic fluid in the stomach in the mother's abdomen. So from the amniotic fluid, we can do a karyotyping. You guys know, right? For when we do a karyotyping, we can identify that the baby is male or the, or female from the karyotyping. So from the karyo, karyotyping itself, we can know either the baby is normal or not. If the If they have the 46 chromosome cells, so it will be normal. If they have more, it will be turned out to be Down syndrome. If the extra chromosome at chromosome number 21. But if they have lack one chromosome, it's probably uh, Kleinfelter syndrome or Turner syndrome. Uh, that's how it works. Okay. So what is the effect of genetic engineering and technology in life? the advantage they must be everything happen every technology must have the advantages and disadvantages okay the advantage of the genetic technology is the production of hormone of enzyme for a person with a diabetes that they if they need to use insulin that mean the diabetic is chronic already so they need to use an insulin because their body cannot produce an insulin so the production of the insulin is from a genetic engineering okay so we can uh, yield a high quality of crops and livestock as well okay let's see the disadvantages okay when we're making something by using a technology, a new organism, we are tend to produce uh, the organism with the high resistance of the pesticide. That is one of the side effects. Okay? If we use the same types of pesticides, then the organism will resist it. No effect to them already. So, it also may cause the extinction to the native species. Okay, let's see to the sample. Okay, we have a variation. The last topic of today, the last subtopic of today, we have variation. Variation, uh, can you see all around you, your friend, your siblings? We are not the same. That's what, we are not the same. We are not look alike. That is a variation. So how many variations we have? We have a continuous variation. We have discontinuous variation. Let's see the continuous first. Continuous is something that we can measure like a hike, weak. It's represented by a normal distribution curve. Okay, normal distribution curve like this. A histogram. We call it a histogram. Is of near to each other, don't have gap between each other. This is a normal distribution graph. It will form a curve like this. Okay. Influenced by the genetic and environment. Example, height and skin color. Okay. Skin color affected by the environment. If you live at a cold place, then you are tend to be slightly white. If you are living at the slightly hot place, you are tend to be slightly brownish. 
Okay. This continuous variation. They have a distinct and clear characteristic. It, it cannot be measured. We are, can only identify the characteristic. It represented by bar chart. How does the bar chart difference from the normal distribution graph? Okay, bar chart is like this. They have a space between each other, a space. This is a bar chart. It influenced by the genetic. If the mother have a A blood type and the father also have a A blood type, probably the children we have A will have A or O blood type. Impossible gonna get B A B blood type. Okay. The example, blood group, fingerprint, it's very distinct. Everyone have a distinctive characteristic of fingerprint. Okay, the factors. Factors can cause the mood variation. The first one, genetic factors. Crossing over. Remember just, just now I did tell you the changing of information between chromosome. It, it is causing a variation. Okay, independent assortment chromosome in meiosis also cause a variation. Random fertilization, chromosome or gene mutation. Okay, we go to the environmental factor. What type of environmental factors? It can be nutrient. If you eat a lot, then you tend to become slightly fat. Temperature, pH, either base or, or alkali, and sunlight. Okay, now we go to the sample of paper one. Okay, we try to apply a technique of GPS in this kind of question. Let's go. Diagram one shows two types of cell division. Two types of cell division. We have a mitosis, we have meiosis. Which of the following statement true about meiosis? Involved in growth. They ask about meiosis. The one that involved in growth is the mitosis teacher. So this one absolutely incorrect. So please remove panka. Occurs in somatic cell. Oh teacher, this one also in mitosis. So remove the answer. Crossing over. Yes, it's for meiosis. But read first that D. Two daughter cells are formed. Not really daughter cell. Usually it four cell. Okay, now we got the correct answer. Okay, which of the following? Let's read the answer. Which of the following caused by gene mutation? We have how many mutation? We have two types of mutation. The first one is chromosomal. The second one is the... What another one? We have a gene mutation. Okay, for chromosomal involving the changes of the number of the chromosome. So, you please remember any disease that the N is a syndrome, syndrome is a chromosomal mutation. But for a gene, apart from that, like color blindness, then we have hemophilia, albinism. Usually, I remember by I remember this by only remember one, which is a chromosomal. Besides that, it will be a gene chromosome, a gene mutation. Okay, let's see the first one, albinism. Okay, let's delete first the one that got syndrome because it is incorrect. We got the correct answer already, albinism. Okay, let's move to the next question. Which of the following shows the stages of anapase that occur during a process of mitosis? What is the keyword over here? Anaphase. Anaphase. Mitosis. What is the acronym that I asked you to remember? PAKMAT. PAKMAT. What happened during P? Prophase. Uh, Kumpul. Then during M? With perato during a tare and last but not least pizza. They are asking about the anapes. So let's take a look on anapes. Anapes 
uh, it will be involving a tarik. It will be being pulled at the opposite pull. Pull. Okay, the first one is involving a kumpul. As a, no, the first one incorrect. The second one beratur is a metaphase. So, the D also incorrect because it's already being separated. So, the correct answer is C for anaphase. Okay, let's move to the next question. Diagram 3 shows the inheritance of hemophilia. The father is normal and the mother have hemophilia. Father normal, if the father normal, that means the ex of the father is carrying a dominant allele. Capital letter, then the mother is having a hemophilia. It will be carry two recessive H allele. Okay, what happened to the kids? Okay, the first one is a carrier. The second one, let's see, is a female or male? The second one, P, X, is a female. It's a female teacher. So, X carry a dominant. Another X is carry a recessive. Oh, no, it's a carrier. So, let's mark. Which one not a carrier female? Please remove panka. Which one not a carrier? Okay, this one not a carrier. Remove carrier. We find a carrier. D also not a carrier. Okay, it's either A and C. Let's see at the Q. Let's see at the Q. It has. Male X. Oh no, this X is carrying a recessive allele. So the correct answer A or C. The correct answer will be a C. Okay, so you sell a side, you transfer your answer in the OMR paper. Okay, let's see. The next question, section A. Okay, yesterday I did talk about the technique to answer section A. The first technique, you have to find the heart of the question. What is the heart of the question? Comprises of the variables. The first variables is manipulated variables. The one that you can always change. The second variables is a responding variable. You cannot change this. And the third variable is the fixed variable. You cannot change this. The, the responding variables is the, the one that you see at the end. Fixed variables, you cannot change or else it will be affected the results of your experiment. Okay, let's read the question, the sample of the question. Okay, for section A, usually the question is all about the science processing skill and one application question the total mark for each question is five mark they have four question so in total it will be 20 marks for section a okay let's have a look on the question sample a group of students from four from four crystal carry out an experiment to study the variation of type of the thumbprint among them. Shows, table 1.1 shows the thumbprint of 25 students in a class. Okay. Everyone have different characteristic of a thumbprint or fingerprint. So, this one is categorized as what vari variation? Either continuous or discontinuous. This one is the discontinuous variation because the characteristic is very distinct, very clear. We cannot measure. We can only see the character. Okay, based on the data in table 1.1, complete table 1.2 below. They already give an answer. You just only have to calculate. Okay, now after calculation, now we get for the whole 7 composite, we for uh, loops, we're going to get 8. And for curve, we're going to get 6. Okay. 
all of this too much only calculate only make an observation already make you get too much free mark over there please don't miss calculate okay ha huh? the question is all about the graph now based on the result in table 1.2 draw a bar chart they want you to draw a bar chart i explain what is the difference between bar chart and histogram right so let's try to draw a bar chart okay just now for the hole for the characteristic of the fingerprint that have whole characteristic is seven uh, for the composite characteristic, they have four. For the loops, they have eight. While for the curve, they have six. Oh, let's draw the chart. Okay, we draw for the whole first. Seven. It has seven. So, you will stop here. So, seven. It's going to have 7 over here. Okay. It has 7. Okay. The second characteristic, composite, it has 4. Okay, it has 4. Then it has loop, loop for it, loop it. How about the last one, curve? Six, six person have a curved fingerprint. So six, you made a very nice one, bar chart. This line, line it up, line each of it. And then don't forget to write the characteristic over here whole this one is the composite um, for the third one is stand for loop and the fourth one is a curve okay usually for this kind of question you're gonna get two marks two mark utilized for this type of question uh, the first one the transfer first mark for if you transfer the information correctly and the second mark, if you made a label, one mark. So you're going to get two marks. Usually this type of question, drawing a graph, they already give the x-axis. They give the x-axis and the scale already. They give the y-axis as well. The scale they already give. You just only have to transfer the information correctly. Okay, let's see on the application question. How is the difference? This is the continuation of the question before, yeah? About the fingerprint. How is the different types of thumbprint in human being can be applied to increase security in the army base? We can increase the security at the certain places by using a thumbprint. Whenever you want to enter some sec some places you can use the thumbprint so can identify who are you because everyone have a different thumbprint okay so not everyone can enter Ev uh, another technology about the we are making a you don't we no need a punch card anymore nowadays we only have two thumbprint indicated that we punch in already. So that is another application. So this one, we can use the thumbprint as a permission to enter the military camp as a security. Okay, let's see the question B. Question B is all about the theory. Theory question and application question. If you don't read, you won't get it. So that's why you have to attend my class, Teacher Suhada class, because I'm going to cover a topic that you already learned from Form 4 until Form 5. 21 topic will be covered within 20 hours in these 10 days. Okay? Okay, let's go to the question. Diagram 6 
shows the stage of the cell division. Can you identify the stage of the cell division? What it is? Hmm. Every, every cell have four chromosomes. This one also have four chromosomes. That means it is a mitosis. What is the stage of the mitosis? But my kumpul beratu what else? Tari pisa kumpul beratu tari pisa Pak Mat, please remember that. So please find which one is the kumpul things. Okay, this one M stage is the kumpul beratu is the N stage. Tari is the L stage and K is the final stage. So they ask about the type of cell division. Type of cell division. The answer only two. It's either you answer mitosis or meiosis. But because this one, they already ask about the types of cell division. Please provide a mitosis because you know the first product have four chromosome and N of the product also have four chromosomes. So that means it is belong to mitosis. If meiosis, if the first product four chromosome, the end product will be four. Divide by two. Okay. That is the difference between mitosis and meiosis. Yeah, class. Okay, let's see the next question. Give a reason for your answer. Okay, I, I told you the reason already. The daughter cell have same number of chromosomes as a parent. Just now, a daughter cell have four chromosomes. Parent cell also have four chromosomes. So, that means it is a mitosis. Arrange the stages of the cell division K element into a correct sequence in the boxes given. Let's see again. We already arranged the first one. M, N, L, K. M, N, L, K. But my professor, metaphys, anaphys, and telophys. Name the structure P. Let's see what is P. Okay, they pointed at the chromosome. Structure P is a chromosome. You're going to get one mark over here. All of this is a theory. Huh? I'm not seeing the application question yet. How many structure P? P is the chromosome. In stage K. What is K? What stage is K? Okay, let's see again. K, K, K is the fourth stage. Each cell have four chromosomes. Four. Please answer four. One mark utilize here. What happened to structure P chromosome if it's exposed to the radioactive radiation? Mutation may occur. I talk about the factors that may cause a mutation. It may be ultraviolet ray. It can be genetic. It can be radioactive radiation. It can be from the asbestos, from the environment. Okay, let's see the question C. The question C. The last question for today. We're going to end that our lesson too soon. So please pay an extra attention over here. This is the types of conceptualize. Yesterday I did uh, teach you on how to make the table, to how to make to write your answer in form of table. Okay, now what they are giving you, they are giving you three examples of gene mutation. Now you know this is a gene mutation, hemophilia gene mutation, sickle cell anemia gene mutation, thalassemia gene mutation as well. We have how many mutations? We have two types of mutation. The first one, chromosomal mutation. Remember all of the disease with syndrome, Down syndrome, uh, Turner syndrome. Kleinfelter syndrome, and the second one is the gene mutation. Apart from that is a gene mutation. Okay, study the information on the diagram above. Build the concept. They ask you to build the concept of gene mutation. So your answer should be based on the following aspect. They give you an aspect already, but now how many, what do you want? They want to write an information. You build the boxes 
the first question ask about the information. So you can write hemophilia, sickle cell anemia and thalassemia is a types of gene mutation. Okay, one mark over there. The second one, identify three common characteristics. They want you to identify what is the common characteristic for this one. Okay, three marks over here. Okay, for the third one, they want you to give an example, another example of the gene mutation. What is another example? It can be albidism. It can be what else? Uh, hemophilia, we have sickle cell, thalassemia. Uh, we can write the color blindness also. And then they ask you about the common characteristic. Common characteristic to construct the actual concept. Yesterday, I did ask about the actual concept. So how do you write the actual concept from the information? You plus with the common characteristic. Okay. Let's see the sample answer, okay? The information, like I told you, thalassemia, sickle cell anemia, hemophilia is the example of the gene mutation. We can get this from the question itself, from the mind map. They provide you the concept map. The common characteristic, it occur because of spontaneous changes in the gene, resulting chemical changes to the gene, can be inherited. It can be inherited to the offspring. So another example could be colorblindness and albinism. So another one mark, three marks over here. Information one mark, three mark for you. An actual concept, how to build an actual concept is the, you write your information plus common characteristic. Okay, gene mutation is a mutation. Gene mutation is from the information. Mutation that causes spontaneous changes in gene and it can be inherited. So, full mark over here, six mark. Very easy to get six mark in this kind of conceptualized question. Section C, which is an essay question. You have a choice either to answer your question in form of essay or table or point form. It's up to you, but I'm encouraging all of you to make a table so that you won't miss out any of the question that they did ask. Okay, class, we are done with the lesson two today. So I will be seeing you tomorrow on the third lesson. We'll be continued on the lessons uh, on the unit six and seven. Unit six and seven, yeah. So I hope to see you again tomorrow. So thank you for your attention. You're welcome. Okay, so I'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you everyone for your attention. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon. Bye.